Hello, Mustang basketball fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler here at Studio One, Marshall, local cable access, and online at smsumustangs.com. I'm your host, Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University, and we're going to take a look back at Mustang Hoops this past weekend. It was a tough one for the Mustangs. They lose a couple of heartbreakers in overtime to Upper Iowa, 105-103, to and then fall to Winona State, 73-68. to We'll take a look at those highlights and preview this week's home games against Northern State and MSU Moorhead here throughout the show. And joining us, as always, is the head coach, uh, Brad Bigler. And uh, as you mentioned, Coach, uh, a tough weekend on the road, uh, uh, lots of things. You know, we don't really need to We'll, we'll talk about it because it was a unique travel weekend, to say the least. Uh, uh, I'm not saying that led to, you know, any of the losses or whatnot, because you got to battle through that. But uh, tough ones, uh, two-point loss and a five-point loss. And the five-pointer was, uh, you know, a chance to tie it twice in the final minute. But uh, a tough one, to say the least. Yeah, I give our guys a lot of credit. I think uh, in both those games, there's opportunities to win the game. Uh, they fought back. They made some some great plays in the end, and just unfortunately, uh, got to tip your hat up for Iowa, knocking down two, not only one, but two game-winning shots, or one to send in overtime, one to win the game. Uh, and it's probably, it's almost ironic that the guy who was replacing an injured guy is the one who knocks down the game-winning shot. So, and then over at uh, Winona, uh, we came out a little bit flat on the defensive end. We were making shots early, which kept us in the ball game, but then we went on a turnover route uh, to end the first half, which gave them about a 12-0 run on us. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but something like a 12-0 run on us. And uh, But I thought the second half we did. We bounced back. We fought it. We got back to it. We had a chance to, to take that game and just was, came up a couple possessions short. Well, as I mentioned, uh, going down to Fayette on Thursday, of course, that was the uh, blizzard, uh, the ground blizzard going on here in Marshall in southern Minnesota. And, uh, you had a unique trip. You tried to get to a certain location, and your plans were that had to change because of the weather, and you, nope. you got to, had to stay in Fairmont uh, on on Thursday night, which probably ended up being okay. Uh, we were trying to push to try to get to Albert Lee, and we got to around that Fairmont exit. And it was just it was just bad. Uh, we actually there was a semi on one side, there was a car on the side of the road. We kind of went right in between them one at one point, and didn't even see the car and. It was uh, it was kind of a scary moment, and when you kind of go through those moments, you're like, well, let's let's play it safe. And we played it safe. We stayed in Fairmont, and we ended up finding out that in Albert Lee there was really no hotel hotel rooms available. So I don't even know what we would have done if we would have went to Albert Lee. Uh, no hotel rooms available. Uh, it would have been it would have been a, a interesting interesting night. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, the Mustangs play uh, down in Fayette on Friday. Lose, as you mentioned, 105-103 in overtime. Uh, the Peacocks hit a three-pointer uh, to send the game in overtime at the end of regulation. Uh, SMSU had a one-point lead in overtime. And as we mentioned, the Peacocks come down, and with just a couple of seconds to go in the game, they hit a three-pointer uh, to win the contest. And then on Saturday, uh, the Mustangs lose 73-68 to Winona State. Now, you get done with the game on Friday night. You're a little bit delayed getting out of Fayette because of uh, some issues with the bus. You get up to Winona on uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, and uh, then a, a very early wake-up call, to say the least, uh, uh, for you and the women's basketball team. It was interesting. Um, I give our bus driver, Mike, all the credit in the world. Uh, after the game, uh, the, the defrost wasn't working. The heat wasn't working up front, and the windows were going to frost up. And he drove from Fayette to Winona, basically scraping the inside of the windshield and um, doing everything he could to try to make it, make sure that we get to Winona. And uh, it was a, it was an eventful trip. I think we pulled in after two. And then, uh, like you said, the fire alarm went off at five something in the morning, which when that happens, you're, everyone was, you didn't even have three hours of sleep, barely. Mm -hmm. And so everyone was kind of a little dazed and confused. At first, do we leave the hotel? Do we not leave the hotel? How serious is this? Did someone just pull the thing? And then all of a sudden, the lady at the front desk is running around the first floor with a blow horn, <laughs> running at everybody. You got to get out. So we all left. We went to a gas station. Uh, just the next, I think we were in that gas station, 45 minutes to an hour. I, I'm not 100% sure on the time. But uh, then we were able to come back in. But the fire alarm was still going off for another 20 minutes or so. And, and so that was... Uh, that was not the best way to start off the morning. 
uh, to say the least. But, uh, you know, I had to make some adjustments, had to fight through adversity. And, uh, again, the Mustangs, uh, they'll fall to Winona State 73-68. to Coach, let's go back to the uh, a Friday game against Upper Iowa. And, and uh, again, you shot very well. You're going to shoot 50% on the road. You'll take that more often than not. You made 10 three-pointers, uh, out-rebounded the Peacocks. Um, and, and you saw some, again, the young guys make some big plays, and especially in overtime. I mean, yeah. uh, Carter Kirk with uh, a near double-double, 13 points, nine rebounds. Uh, Turner Moen had 11 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Um, you know, a lot of different guys stepped up. And obviously, when you score that many points, you're going to have a lot of guys score. But you saw some maturity and some big moments by those guys. Well, there were some opportunities that presented themselves. Uh, Mitch Wegg fouled out, so Carter had to finish the game. And Carter did a great job. A couple of hustle plays, offensive rebound, putbacks. Um, uh, you also saw Turner Moan at the point guard spot a little bit, trying to make some plays. And he did, as we'll see on video, found some guys. Uh, Carter Kirk uh, got a layup from Turner being at the point. And uh, those two guys in particular really stepped up their game that night. And um, and then the following night, mm -hmm. uh, you see the freshmen, the kind of the inconsistencies yeah. of a freshman. Both of them kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, weren't in rhythm as much, um, but that's that's part of who we are right now. We just kind of continue to, to get better and a bit, uh, fight through those uh, those inconsistencies. Another young guy on the squad that had a big weekend was MJ Delmore. Uh, he had 14 points, hit a couple of threes on Friday night, and then had 15 points and was 5 of 5 from behind the arc against Winona State. 7 for 7 uh, from three-point range. You'll take that each weekend? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> we'll take that. And, and what I like about him is guys are starting to find him more and more, um, especially our post when they're when they're getting post touches and kickouts and uh, their their heads are up and uh, we need to find him when he's open on the three point line. We need to find him. Yes, and so the uh, Mustangs uh, again on uh, Friday night, one hundred five, one hundred three against uh, Upper Iowa in overtime. Again, uh, the Peacocks uh, a unique situation. We played them just. A little less than a month earlier than that, and and they had our number here in Marshall, and uh, they were able to to beat the Mustangs again. Mustangs had five players in double figures in that contest. Twenty three points for Cole Martin. He had a, a career high for that. Uh, Joey Bartlett in the twenty points and nine rebounds uh, in the contest. So let's take a look at those highlights uh, from Dorman Gymnasium in Fayette, Iowa. Again, the Mustangs and the Peacocks, Southwest. Um, here in the first half, going right to left in the gray uniforms and a nice backdoor cut, and there's uh, Terry Mullen with the basket. Then here, that's a quick one, but Cole Martin with uh, the slam dunk going down the middle of the paint. About 8.31 uh, Friday night, there's a shot by Cole Martin. And then you'll see uh, a big kick out here, and there's the first of uh, the threes for MJ Delmore. As you're going to see, the ball was just moving well. Here's a perfect example of guys moving that basketball around. Travis with a nice pull-up jumper. Minders, a uh, couple of baskets. It went big, big one in, uh, end of regulation. Right there, you saw Drew Osmussen shed the block on the, uh, on the screen and then fight the contact with a nice finish. There's a big uh, offensive rebound by Mitch Wegg in the basket. Go to the second half. Three-pointer by Bartlett, bottom of the uh, top of the screen. Yeah, just our tempo was good uh, throughout the weekend. Just keeping that pressure on the on the defense. Uh, now on the other side of the basketball, on the defensive side, we need to. We obviously need to be better. Uh, both teams shot a high percentage this weekend, and uh, we have to do a better job of, of getting them out of rhythm. Cole Martin hits the three off of that uh, end out, and he'll answer up here with another field goal. Nice backdoor drive and finish. More importantly. As we're coming to the second half, you're going to see Turner and, and Carter continuing to make plays. Um, you're going to see here Travis Fine and Carter, but what a great and one finish. Uh, again, great play by Travis. And the Mustangs trail 47 45 at half. Came back, got the lead here in the second half, and then built on that. There's a three in the corner for the Mustangs, Martin. And MJ just, again, making some good plays. You're going to see Cole coming off here for a screen, pull-up jumper, knocks it in. And then here's Turner. Turner getting in the paint, drawing a couple guys, finding the big boy. And uh, Carter finishes with a, with a high, high one off the glass. This was a big one here for the Mustangs as they uh, 
At that point, uh, took a three-point lead uh, at the end of regulation, but the Peacocks come back and uh, tie it up. And over time, there's a big finish there by Carter Kirk. And as we finish up here, you see just another great effort by Carter Kirk with that offensive rebound put back. So, uh, unfortunately, the Mustangs, after that basket, uh, took the lead. Uh, the Peacocks came down and, um, you know, got a big offensive rebound. I uh, got to within uh, one point, and then we were fouled it in, in there at the end of overtime and missed a couple of free throws, and, and uh, they were able to come down and hit a three-pointer. And, uh, you know, at the end of regulation, we didn't show the highlight, but very good defense by your squad on that three-pointer that, that, that tied the game and sent it to overtime. I, I think, you know, Joey might have even tipped the ball. That's how close he was to blocking that. Yeah, and I, I whether he tipped or not, but it was close. Yeah. Uh, we, we kept the ball. We made him shoot a contested shot. Um, you know, sometimes you want to follow in those situations. Sometimes you play it out. We've had some success, probably more success, uh, playing it out. Um, we also gave up an offensive rebound just before that off a of free throw in that second half. So uh, with Mitch Way being out, we just said, hey, we're going to redshirt. We're going to we're going to switch off. We're going to try to keep him out of keep him out of the paint or guard the three point line. And uh, they made the shot. Give him a credit. And the Mustangs uh, shot 50 percent. In the the game, 39 of 78 uh, made 15 of 26 uh, from the uh, or 15 of 21 uh, from the free throw line, but unfortunately uh, coming up on the short end of that. And, and coach, uh, you know we've had some tight ones this year, losing in overtime to Northern State in non-conference play. Uh, Sioux Falls hitting a three at the buzzer uh, to beat the Mustangs, and now this one. I mean, uh, there's a lot of season left, and you know obviously there could be other games that we've won that have gone the other way. You know that we've got to hang on, but th those are three games there that. Within a couple of minutes, right now we've got uh, three more wins, and we're sitting at uh, you know twelve and twelve and four instead of nine and six, uh, nine and seven. And, and honestly, I'm not really too worried about that. I mean, I think we need to find a way. This is a group. Before we're going into this season, we knew we were going to fight a lot of close games, or hopefully, we we're going to be in a lot of close games. And we have to find a way to continue to be better at the end of the games, better preparation, uh, better execution, and uh, and then. Basketball is a, a, a game of players make a place. Mm -hmm. and, and at this at the end of games, you know, last year we had Bernard Burch step up and make some game winning plays. We had Will Giddings step up and knock down a shot. You had uh, Matt Zagger versus Augustine at their place, knock down five threes in the last ten minutes. You have Nick Smith making a shot against uh, Wayne. at Wayne. So it, it's a it's a player's game and, and and these guys as they're they get more confident as they're in those situations more and more, uh, they're gonna make those plays. And and we're going to keep repping it in practice. Uh, that way they have the confidence to step up in the game. Well, again, the Winona State on Saturday night, the Mustangs lose by five points. Uh, really, a uh, couple of big minutes there. End of the first half, the Mustangs are tied, and uh, the Warriors go on a, a big run there to take a 45-33 lead at halftime. They extend that to 17 points in the second half, and that would have been a, a great opportunity for the guys to just say, boy, it's been a long weekend. We lost a tough one on Friday. Let's just pack it in. But they came all the way back and tied it up and, and had a chance to, uh, to to take the lead possibly in the last minutes of the game. And, and they did. At the halftime, I think we knew ourselves when they had 18 points off our turnovers that uh, we, we were at fault. Uh, not that not trying to take anything away from Winona. They played exceptional. They we, we didn't stop them all night for the most part. But our turnovers that led to their easy buckets, that was probably the difference in the game. And – and that's been our Achilles heel all year. We have to find a way not to have those. Now, you're going to have a few of those throughout the game, but we tend to have them on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back possessions. Mm -hmm. So we'll go like three possessions with those turnovers, and that's you can't do that if you want to beat good teams. And you definitely can't do that if you're going to go on the road and try to beat a team. Well, let's take a look at the highlights uh, from McCowan Gym in Winona, the Mustangs in the white uniforms uh, in this uh, opening half uh, going left to right. And we start off here with Cole Martin. Uh, struggled a bit, uh, but started off uh, red hot. Keep it continuing that from uh, Friday night's game. That was his only three-pointer, only basket of the game. And right here you're going to see MJ finding Mitch Wegg on the nice uh, drive baseline. Mitch Wegg, career high, 23 points in this battle. MJ Delmer with one of his seven threes. Rattled it in front of uh, a pretty good crowd. I think MJ and Turner both had their... Their entire families there, so we had a, a pretty good fan section from uh, from the Wisconsin uh, Turner Moan and, and MJ Delmore fan club. Again, finding the open man. There's Delmore left wing connects. Again, the Mustangs uh, right there with the Warriors in the first half at a late run, and they're down by 12. Now we go to the second half, and 
We've got a dunk by Carter Kirk. Nice pass from Minders. And a lot of these plays, you're going to see us trying to make a comeback here. Uh, Winona switched up from a man to a zone. I thought our guys handled that well. We were able to get some easy buckets right here. Cole Martin with a nice steal. MJ capitalizing on the play. Mustang slowly chipping back into this ball game, getting it down to, uh, again, a three-point game and tying it with about four minutes to go. And it was nice to see us execute our zone or our press. Here you see us getting a steal right here. Uh, we were working on that last week. We put some time in and, and to see those, to see that play off, that was, that was good to see. Uh, right here you're going to see Turner Moan again with a nice finish. Pretty good effort from that young man throughout the weekend. Uh, a few turnovers again this game, but uh, it wasn't, uh, I mean, he was, he was giving everything he had, especially with the family in the crowd. There's Minders with the three, and then he'll connect on another one here uh, to, to tie this ball game up late. Tough hit. And that is. And Travis, again, he's, the, he's excelled at that role all week, all year long, uh, that shooting role. And uh, it was nice to see him knock down some shots. When yeah, he yeah scoring wise, he had nine points, hit three three pointers. Uh, Mustangs, no starter, uh, scored in double figures. Uh, Again, 38 points combined by uh, Delmore and Wegg in that setback. But, uh, you know, it's tough, uh, Coach. You know, so those guys that you kind of count on a lot, uh, struggled shooting the ball, but you had other guys step up, and that's what you're going to need here in this uh, second half of the season. If Joey struggles or Cole Martin or whomever, other guys need to make some plays, and, and MJ and Mitch Wegg did that. And, and, and Joey, Joey looked tired uh, on Saturday. He, for the first time, I mean, he was asking to come out on a couple different occasions, and, uh, he, he just didn't have those same legs as he did the night before. And when that's the case, we need a guy like Mitch Wegg to step up. Um, with MJ coming off the bench, and, and he's in that different group or different rotation, um, he's playing some pretty good basketball right now. And, and like you said, we probably need to try to find and get him, get him the ball a little bit more. And that's what we're going to look to do here going into the next couple weekends. Well, the Mustangs return home to the RA facility this weekend. A couple of big, big games, uh, great rivalry games at the RA facility. We encourage the fans to come on out. Friday night, Northern State um, is at the RA facility. The two teams played back in November, a non-conference game, and the Wolves won in overtime. And then MSU Moorhead, uh, arguably one of the top teams in the conference right now. They're going to top uh, 15 team in the country. They've lost just one time. Uh, offensively, one of the top teams uh, in the country. They can shoot the basketball. They score almost 90 points a game. And, uh, Coach, what a great weekend this is going to be, an exciting time to, to bring these two teams. They're the top two teams in the North Division. And uh, to get back in the upper half of the, of the South, uh, these games are just as important. And uh, it starts on Friday night. Let's talk about the opponents. Yeah, we knew this was going to be a tough stretch. Uh, last weekend on the road, now you're coming home and you're playing two of the top teams in the North, two of the top teams in the conference. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, with Northern already beating us once. So uh, we have to be able to kind of bounce back. Uh, sports are sometimes uh, unfortunate. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing how one play here or there can change a, fact, uh, change a game. And we've had maybe, if you want to say, other teams have made more plays than us. Maybe we've had some bad luck. Whatever the reason is, uh, we haven't been winning. So mm -hmm. now we got to kind of strap it on, uh, get back to work, be, you know, attention to detail. Do all those things that for preparation that allow you to be in a ball game to give you a chance. And I think the guys have been good. Yesterday they were good. Uh, today we're going to bounce back. And our routine isn't changing. We're not panicking. Uh, we do what we do. Uh, now it's a matter of just doing that better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's our guys' goal going into this week. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. It'll be nice to have that uh, the student section yeah. back on campus. Uh, just that energy is going to be a little bit better. And um, it'll be a fun weekend. Yes, it will be. Again, the Mustangs and the Wolves tip off 8 o'clock Friday night at the RA facility. The Mustangs and the Dragons uh, on Saturday at 7 o'clock. So get, mark those times down. 8 o'clock on Friday, 7 o'clock on um, Saturday night against the MSU Moorhead Dragons. Again, they're uh, top 15 in the country and a northern uh, team that has just three losses this year uh, as well. So it should be a great weekend of basketball. So come on out to the RA facility and uh, cheer on the Mustangs as they get back on the winning track. For the head coach, Brad Bigler, I'm Kelly Loft. I want to thank you for watching this week's episode of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler. Until next time, go Mustangs. Have a great week.